हेलो फ्रेंड्स आई एम डी एच उबलपनावर लेक्चरर डिपार्टमेंट ऑफ अप्लाइड साइंस एस जे पी एन पॉलिटेक्निक डेड सोसी इन दिस वीडियो आई एम गोइंग टू डिस्कस अबाउट द इम्पॉर्टेंट क्वेश्चन ऑफ यूनिट नंबर फोर ऑफ अप्लाइड साइंस बाय नेम वे मोशन एंड साउंड सो दिस चैप्टर इज ऑफ टेन आवर्स एंड फॉर यूर सेमेस्टर इन एग्जामिनेशन यू आर गोइंग टू गेट थर्टी टू मार्क्स सो इन पार्ट सी सिक्स मार्क्स क्वेश्चन इज क्वेश्चन कैर इज सिक्स मार्क्स यू आर गोइंग टू गेट थ्री क्वेश्चन आइदर एक्सपेरिमेंटल रिलेटेड क्वेश्चन और थेरोटिकल क्वेश्चन एंड फाइव मार्क्स टू क्वेश्चन लॉन्ग एंसर इन पार्ट बी एंड सिंपल क्वेश्चन टू मार्क्स टू क्वेश्चन टोटल ऑफ थर्टी टू मार्क्स सो अकॉर्डिंग टू माई ओपिनियन प्लीज स्टडी दिस चैप्टर वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट फॉर यूर एग्जामिनेशन इट कवर्स ए लार्ज अमाउंट ऑफ मार्क्स सो इन दिस चैप्टर सो इन दिस चैप्टर वॉट आर दे पॉइंट्स यू आर गोइंग टू स्टडी इम्पॉर्टेंट वट इज द डेफिनेशन ऑफ पीरियोडिक मोशन एग्जाम्पल फॉर पीरियोडिक मोशन वट इज द डेफिनेशन ऑफ सिंपल हारमोनिक मोशन फॉर्मूला और इक्वेशन फॉर सिंपल हारमोनिक मोशन डेरिवेशन एंड वट इज मेड बाई वेव दैन वट इज द डेफिनेशन ऑफ वेव मोशन टर्म्स रिलेटेड टू दी वेव मोशन सो मोशन देर आर थ्री टाइप्स ऑफ मोशन पीरियोडिक मोशन इज वन टाइप ऑफ मोशन so periodic means regular interval of time the body is coming again and again along the same path such type of motion is called as a periodic motion so what is the definition of periodic motion any motion that is repeat regularly in equal interval of time is called as periodic motion so for a motion there is a time requires so if any body is coming and again and again along the same path at a definite time interval of time then such type of motion is called as a periodic motion so for example all of you know that earth is revolving around the sun so this is a periodic motion a regular interval of time so due to this you are going to get different seasons the motion of electron around the nucleus in electronics the electron is revolving around the nucleus it is a periodic motion so it is coming again and again along the same path in a definite interval of time so a type of periodic motion is defined as a simple harmonic motion so what is the definition of simple harmonic motion it is denoted by a short cut capital shm so simple harmonic motion is defined as a motion of a particle which both back and forth along a straight line such that its acceleration is directly proportional to the displacement from a fixed point and it is always towards that point so let us understand the meaning that so if a body is moving back and forth forward and backward along a straight line in such a way that so whenever a body is in a motion a body is having displacement a body is having velocity a body is having acceleration so in shm the acceleration is directly proportional that is it is if the displacement changes the acceleration also changes acceleration is rate of change of velocity from a fixed point and is always directed to that point so that is there is a restoring force so if i give an example for an shm then you are going to understand what is meant by shm so please remember student shm is a, a type of a periodic motion which satisfies this condition that is acceleration is always directly proportional to the displacement so displacement is directly proportional to the acceleration then such type of periodic motion is called as simple harmonic motion or it is also defined as shm so look at this diagram example for shm a simple pendulum so the motion of a pendulum is along a gravitational force so here the body is moving again and again along ab ba ac and ca under earth gravitational force so this type of periodic motion i call it as shm so here in a oscillation of a pendulum there is a displacement there is a velocity there is an acceleration so there is an external force that is a gravitational force under earth gravitational force this pendulum is moving next wave motion so up and down motion of a wave motion is a periodic motion now let us discuss a very important question for five marks many times asked in your examination derive an equation for the displacement of a particle executing shm so there are many number of example for shm so he is asking to find the formula for the displacement of a particle executing shm if there is a motion what are the parameter associated displacement velocity and acceleration so for your for your syllabus you are having only the formula for displacement so 
observe the diagram that if a if a particle is moving in a circular path along the circumference of a circle then if i draw a perpendicular along the diameter look at the diagram diagram is ac and bd then the p is a particle moving in a circular path then its perpendicular along the diameter is moving up and down or to and fro i call it as a periodic motion or a shl so when a particle is moving from a to p there is an angle made by the body at the center that is aop it is denoted by theta it is called as angular displacement so angular displacement is referred to the displacement of a body in a rotatory motion so here there are circular path motion there is a periodic motion or an shm so there is an angular rotation of a body so for this question the what is the method you are going to up, adopt here first you have to draw the necessary diagram so look at the diagram draw a circle then draw a two diameter that is ac and bd then draw an arrow mark so particle is initially at point a and after some time it reaches the point p and there is an angle theta at the center so angle aop is called as theta radian it is called as angular displacement so theta stands for angular displacement and when particle moves from a to p if i draw a perpendicular on the diameter bd so there is a straight line displacement or it is called as a linear displacement it is denoted by y so in the uh, diagram i represented omega omega is a greek letter so uh, omega stands for angular velocity so what is angular velocity rate of change of angular displacement so if a body is moving from a to p in a time t the angle made by the body at the center is theta the time taken by the body is small t then omega is equal to angular displacement upon time then theta is equal to omega t which is very useful for our derivation so the diagram carries marks so let us consider a particle p moving along the circumference of a circle all of you know what is meant by circumference of a circle circular path of a circle and what is the radius of the circle i denoted r but you take it as a small a or capital a then with angular uniform angular velocity omega there is a definition for uniform angular velocity the rate of change of angular displacement is called as angular velocity denoted by omega let the particle starts from x so i have not shown here x here so x and reaches the point p in a time t second if omega is the angular velocity so please remember omega is the theta by t then by the time the particle moves from x to p along the circular path the foot or perpendicular of p along the diameter from p to is y o dash will be displaced from o to q the displacement of the foot perpendicular from p at any instant oq is equal to y so here letter english letter y stands for linear displacement if a body is in a linear motion we call it as a linear motion the particle is moving in a straight line along the diameter and particle is moving in a circular path at the circumference of a circle as the particle describes a uniform circular motion the foot of the perpendicular perform such a student don't confuse here if a particle is moving in a circular path then its perpendicular along the diameter is executing a linear motion the foot of the particle is moving along the diameter up and down which is a periodic motion or which is an shm now in the diagram oq is equal to y be the displacement and the time taken by the particle to reach from o to q is a t so consider the right angle triangle opq op q then by trigonometry sin theta is equal to so i have made a small change there so instead of oq we write pq pq is opposite side then op is hypotenuse sin theta so pq is equal to y then op is the radius of the circle here i have taken small a is equal to sin theta so y is equal to a sin theta so i have told you that theta is equal to omega t omega is equal to theta by t theta is equal to omega t so therefore y is equal to a sin omega t so here in this formula y stands for linear displacement a stands for amplitude sin is a trigonometry function omega is angular velocity then t stands for time taken by the particle to reach from that is a to p 
so final formula is y is equal to a sin omega t this is an equation or a formula represents for the displacement of a particle executing SHL. For your syllabus, you are having the formula for displacement, not necessary to derive velocity and acceleration. Now let us consider the basic idea about a wave. So wave is a very important, we have studied in our previous chapter, that is, uh, what are, that is, sorry, in this chapter only we are going to study about wave, wave concept. So the wave is very useful to understand light and sound, electronic communication subject and so on forth. So what is the definition of wave? The type of disturbance produced in a medium. So whenever a particle is disturbed in a medium, so wave is produced. So wave are energy carriers. So for example, a stone dropped in a water. So all of you please remember, a wave is an example of a periodic motion or it is an example of an SHM. So wave is defined as a type of disturbance produced in the medium. So in any medium, solid, liquid and gas, if the particle is disturbed, so particles disturb produces the wave. So for example, if I take a stone and drop it in a water, so there are water waves, concentric circle. So if I make a thread up and down, there is a disturbance, it is a demonstration of a wave. Then what is the definition of wave motion? So propagation of disturbance from one region of space to the another is called wave motion. Students, wave, wave motion is very, very important to understand the chapter of light and sound, electronic communications. So all these are explained on the basis of wave motion. Next, let us understand what are the terms related to the waves. Very important. If I want to understand about the wave motion, so what are the important terms? For example, first one is oscillation or cycle, second one is wavelength, wave period or time period, wavelength, frequency and wavelength. So what does the diagram represents a wave? This diagram is called in trigonometry in mathematics as a sine curve. Why? Because trigonometry function sine theta takes 0, 1, 0, minus 1, 0, 1, minus, sorry, 1 and 0. So if I plot a graph of displacement versus time of a particle executing in SHM, the resulting graph is a sine curve shown in the figure. So just here, the graph of displacement against time is a sine curve of an SHM is shown in the below figure. So Y coordinate is a displacement, X coordinate is a time of an SHM, then the resulting graph is a sine curve. In electronics, it is called as a sine curve and trigonometry we also call as a sine curve. So in this diagram, try to understand here, so small a stands for amplitude and one cycle means one up and mo down motion. Up motion is called as two motion, down motion is called as fro motion. The distance travelled by the view for one up and down motion is denoted by Greek letter lambda. It is called as wavelength. The time taken by the wave to complete one cycle or one oscillation is denoted by capital T. It is called as a time period. The horizontal line is called as mean or equilibrium position. So which are the terms related to the wave motion? So referring to the above figure, oscillation. It is defined as a to and fro motion is called oscillation or it is also called as a cycle. So one up and down motion of a particle is called as one oscillation. What is the definition of time period? The time taken by the wave for one cycle is called as time period. So if time period changes, frequency changes. If frequency changes, time period changes. There is a relation n is equal to 1 upon capital T. n stands for frequency. Very important terms, frequency. So number of oscillations or cycle per second is called frequency. If number of cycle is more, then the frequency of the wave is more. In electronics, the frequency is megahertz, gigahertz, terahertz, amplitude. So I would, in the diagram sign curve, the horizontal line is called as a mean position or equilibrium position. So amplitude is defined as a maximum displacement of a wave from its mean position is called as amplitude. So in light and sound chapter, if the amplitude of light increases, brightness of the light increases. If the amplitude of sound increases, the intensity of sound also increases. In the electronics, you are going to study as an amplifier. The amplifier is a which increases strength. So these all definitions are very important for electronic subjects. So wavelength. 
the distance traveled by the wave for one cycle is called wave length it is denoted by lambda so there is a relation phi is equal to n lambda if frequency increases velocity also increases so again once again the distance between the distance traveled by the wave for one cycle is called wave length then what is the definition of wave velocity the distance traveled by the wave per unit time is in a given direction because velocity is a vector having constant direction is called wave velocity so there is a relation phi is equal to n lambda students there is a very important question many times asked in your annual examination derive phi is equal to n lambda with the figure and assumptions you have to draw a very simple diagram you are studying trigonometry draw, draw the sine curve two coordinate x coordinate and y coordinate in x coordinate time y coordinate displacement for one cycle you re represent lambda for one cycle capital t so explanation the above diagram or figure represents a graph graph is a two variables of displacement of a particle executing shm versus or against time the resulting graph is a sine curve in trigonometry let capital t is the time period small n stands for frequency of the wave lambda stands for distance covered by the wave for one oscillation so what is the proof for this derivation very very simple so frequency and time period is related by n is equal to 1 n is equal to 1 upon capital t if the time period increases frequency decreases so frequency means the number of cycles if time period is very small then the number of oscillations are very more then frequency is more so for example microsecond so then it is a megahertz so n is equal to 1 upon t this formula is known formula and definition of wave velocity is displacement upon time then for one oscillation or i call it as one cycle refer the diagram displacement is equal to lambda for one cycle the distance traveled by the wave is lambda then the time taken by the wave to cover one cycle is capital t so in the above formula substitute lambda by t use the formula n is equal to 1 upon t so we will going to arrive the relation v is equal to n lambda very very important formula in electronics wave velocity is equal to wave frequency and wave length that is if the frequency of the wave increases the speed of the wave also increase the light is having high frequency velocity then frequency is more so in wavelength in light chapter there are different colors wavelength changes the color of the light also changes so very important idea you are going to study types of waves you are going to study the heading types of waves so waves are classified in many ways one dimension three dimensional waves so according to our syllabus so waves can be broadly there is a question explain the classification of wave very important question explain the classification of waves that is how the waves are classified so waves are broadly classified into two types mechanical waves and non mechanical waves the another name for mechanical waves is elastic waves another name for non mechanical waves is uh, electromagnetic waves so there are waves in the nature so without a solid liquid and gas they cannot propagate so such type of waves are called as uh, mechanical waves so how do you define the mechanical waves the waves which require a material medium for their propagation are called as mechanical waves or elastic waves why it is called as elastic wave so during the mechanical propagation of the wave so compression and rarefaction take place this is called as elasticity so once again so waves which require a material medium for their propagation are called mechanical wave in the propagation of mechanical waves elasticity that is compression and rarefaction you are going to study and density mass upon value so air is having mass solid is having mass so there is a size mass upon volume of the medium play an important role hence they are called elastic waves this wave transmit energy and momentum not the matter so student please remember when there is a propagation of wave so there is a transmission of energy light is an energy sound is an energy momentum is mass into velocity the example for mechanical waves 
so views on surface of water if you drop a stone on a water on water surface the views are produced they are mechanical views then sound waves sound is a form of energy sound propagate in solid liquid and gas in the form of mechanical wave sound cannot propagate in empty space or in a vacuum so if a thin wire is stretched at both end if the waves are produced it they are called as a mechanical waves so during the earthquake in the earth there is we have mata heard seismic waves they are the mechanical waves so accordingly there are two types of mechanical waves again mechanical waves are divided into two types what are they first one is a transverse wave and another one is longitudinal wave so again mechanical waves are divided into two types the first one is a transverse wave and another one is a longitudinal waves transverse means vertical longitudinal means horizontal so these waves are also called a progressive waves why they are called as progressive wave they can propagate they can move from one region of space to the another region of space energy transfer take place so look at the diagram so this is uh, the diagram of uh, mechanical waves so a stands for amplitude that is uh, there is a distance lambda okay so what is the definition of transverse wave if the particle of the medium if the particle of the medium vibrate at right angle to the direction of the propagation of the wave then the wave is called transverse wave you are going to study about this transverse wave further so what are the transverse wave so wave motion means the particle motion if the particle of the medium vibrate at right angle to the direction of the propagation of the wave then wave is called transverse if the wave is moving horizontally if the particles are vibrating in vertical direction such type of waves are called as transverse wave so it has been proved that light waves are transverse waves electromagnetic waves are transverse wave so transverse wave are propagated in the form of crust and trough in the diagram c stands for crust crust means the upper portion of the wave is called as crust the lower portion of the wave is called as a trough or there is a depression compression sorry crust is an elevation trust trough is an depression or rise in the wave is called as a crust there is for depression in the wave is called as a trough so the wave can uh, transverse wave are propagated in the form of crust and trough this wave can propagate through solid and surface of the liquid this wave cannot be polarized this wave can sorry this waves can be polarized very important polarization means when this waves are brought, is passed through certain material the outcome waves are having vibration in only one direction which is having application in electronic communication signals are polarized in a transverse wave pressure and density do not vary very important so there is a question what is the difference between transverse wave and longitudinal wave we are going to study so when the transverse wave propagate through the medium pressure of the medium does not change us density of the medium does not change us pressure is defined as force divided by area density is mass upon volume the distance between two conjunctive crust and trough is called wavelength then example for transverse wave water waves waves on a stretched wire then light waves electromagnetic waves so that the sentence is repeated two times what are longitudinal waves so longitudinal means horizontal so if the particle of the medium vibrate along the direction of the propagation of the wave then the wave is called longitudinal that is if the wave is moving horizontally and particles are also moving horizontally such type of waves or such type of mechanical waves are called as longitudinal waves so longitudinal waves are propagated in the form of compression and rarefaction look at the diagram so for example when a tuning fork tuning fork is a source of sound when it is striked with a rubber pad then side to that air medium comes to near to each other this is called as compression denoted by c air layer comes near to each other so when this compression transfer to the next layer a vacuum is created so the dividing of this air medium is called as rarefaction what is the process taking place in compression and rarefaction in case of compression pressure increases force divided by area increases then density also increase but the size decreases in rarefaction pressure decreases 
then volume increases density decreases so in case of transverse wave pressure and density does not change but in case of longitudinal wave when they propagate through the medium pressure and density changes so the wave propagates longitudinal wave cannot be polarized remember longitudinal wave cannot be brought to the only one direction vibrations cannot be brought to the only one what is meant by vibration when a body is striked with another material body start vibrates a tuning fork vibrates a musical instrument wire is going to vibrate so when vibration is taking place sound is produced so vibration is a source for sound the distance between two conjugative compression or rarefaction is called wavelength example for longitudinal waves sound waves sound waves always travel in air medium in the form of longitudinal waves waves along the spiral spring vibrating to new fork so let us discuss a very important question many times asked in your examination what is the difference between transverse wave and longitudinal so the scientist have studied about the transverse wave and the longitudinal waves so what is the characteristic of transverse wave particle of the medium vibrate perpendicular to the direction of the wave motion then in case of longitudinal wave particle of the medium vibrates along the direction of the propagation of the wave so in transverse wave perpendicular in longitudinal wave parallel to uh, propagation of the wave so transverse wave cannot propagate so sorry transverse wave can propagate only in solids and on the surface of the liquids longitudinal waves travel in surface of solid liquid and gas of the medium this wave consisting of crust and trough transverse wave consisting of crust and trough then longitudinal wave consisting of compression and rarefaction transverse wave can be polarized means vibrations can be brought to the only one direction longitudinal waves cannot be polarized then example ripples in water if water is made to vibrate then ripples are produced they are called as transverse wave light waves sound wave is an example for longitudinal waves so at least remember five difference between transverse wave and longitudinal first one is particle motion then here transverse wave propagate in which are the mediums then transverse wave consisting of crust and trough their compression and rarefaction transverse wave can be polarized longitudinal waves cannot be polarized so example for transverse wave and example for longitudinal so you can give other example so but it should be the example of transverse and longitudinal next what are the non mechanical waves what do you, how do you define the non mechanical wave so i am dealing with the question explain the classification of waves or if there is a question explain the classification of mechanical waves then waves which does not require material medium for their propagation are called non mechanical waves so there are some waves which can propagate through the empty space or vacuum they are called as non mechanical wave or we call it as electromagnetic waves there are number of electromagnetic waves they are discovered time to time so due to this non mechanical wave today in our electronic engineering we are having electronic communication that is mobile communication tv communication and satellite communication so non mechanical waves are also called as electromagnetic waves and they can travel in free space without the help of any material medium non mechanical wave can propagate through the vacuum so vacuum is defined as an empty space there is a no medium example for non mechanical wave light waves heat radiations heat waves radio waves the signal which can travel in a space x rays are discovered then electromagnetic waves and gamma rays now let us study about the sound so in order to study about the sound we should know what is meant by wave and wave motions the basic idea of wave is very important so what are the important uh, properties of wave sound is a form of energy sound is a mechanical wave sound is a longitudinal wave sound travels in solid liquid and gas speed of sound is 331 meter per second so this is for your understanding so know about about the sound sound is a mechanical wave the speed of sound in air is 331 meter per second they are belongs to the longitudinal wave sound cannot travel in vacuum but they can travel in solid liquid and yes so there there is a question many times asked in your examination so newton is the first scientist who has studied about the velocity of sound in air so 
the speed of sound is 330 meter per second it has been experimentally found out there are number of experiment uh, to find the speed of sound so we are having many proof that sound travels in air medium so we can hear the sound of a musical instrument you can see here the whistle of a train so these all are experimental evidence that sound travels in air medium so there is a very important question what is the question is asked explain newton's formula for velocity of sound in air so for this whatever something you have studied in your heat chapter they are useful and earlier what you have studied about wave motion is very important so what is the first you have to write newton was the first to obtain an expression for the velocity of a longitudinal wave that is a sound wave in a medium the formula for the velocity of sound is v is equal to square root of e by rho so e stands for elasticity of the medium or modulus of elasticity that is compression and rarefication is called as elasticity and this elasticity is changed from one medium to another medium and medium changes density of the medium also changes so rho stands for density of the medium so when new what is the assumption made by newton newton assumed that when sound waves travel through the air producing compression and rarefication you know what is meant by compression and rarefication in a compressed region volume decreases and hence pressure increases in the rarefication region volume increases and pressure decreases thus the propagation of sound wave in gas medium is accompanied by the change in pressure and volume throughout the medium according to newton the slight rise in temperature at the compression is said to be neutralized by the slight fall in the temperature or just only you tell that no change in temperature take place during the compression and rarefication this type of process we call in heat chapter as isothermal that is thermodynamical process that is pressure volume changes at constant temperature is called as isothermal process so make the shortcut here when sound travels in air medium pressure and volume changes at constant temperature it is known as isothermal process so according to the isothermal condition so elasticity can be substituted as p so then in the above formula you substitute v is equal to square root of p by rho in place of e i am going to substitute p newton has assumed when sound travels in air medium pressure and volume changes in such a way that temperature does not changes so this formula is known as newton's formula for velocity of sound now let us study that whether newton's formula is correct or not so all of you know that in science whatever theoretical prediction is done that should be experimentally verified then the theory is accepted so whether newton formula is correct or not we are going to verify so there is a full form for ntp normal temperature and pressure so what is the normal pressure of air medium 1.0123 into 10 days to 5 newton per meter square you are going to study this in heat and thermodynamics and normal density of air is 1.293 kg per meter cube students you have to buy at this data and substitute this value in this newton's formula and what is the answer you are going to get 279 into 10 to 2 that is 280 meter per second but the value of speed of sound experimentally is 331 meter per second so 280 and 331 if i compare so there is a lot of difference 15 percentage difference so theoretical value is 16 percent less than the experimental value that is 332 meter per second so there is a large error which cannot be accepted so newton's formula was failure to explain the formula for velocity of sound so uh, please once again i'm going to write, uh, write the velocity of sound in air then assumption isothermal condition and substitute it substitute the ntp value and uh, find the answer compare with the experimental value there is an error so newton's formula was not accepted so there was a scientist by name laplace have corrected the newton's formula so laplace suggested that as the air is a bad conductor of heat and compression and rarefications are produced rapidly in the air when sound travels in air temperature falls in the region of rarefication and rise in that of compression so there is a temperature does not remains constant the formation of compression and rarefication produced rapidly in the air hence there is a no time for equilibrium of temperature 
as a result change in pressure and volume are brought about the idiopathic condition so what is the meaning of this so idiopathic process is a thermodynamical process in which there is a change in pressure and volume take place in such a way that there is there is no enter of the heat and inside and outside so when the compression and rarefaction take place the temperature changes so he call it as idiopathic condition and he have substituted idiopathic condition e is equal to gamma into p in place of elasticity of the medium substitute gamma p and rho then the gamma is referred as ratio of specific heat that is cp upon cv c stands for specific heat of a gas p stands for constant pressure and v stands for constant volume then if i substitute this value in this Newton, uh, newton's formula in place of e i am going to substitute gamma p so this formula is known as newton laplace formula if you substitute in a standard value that is called as ntp so it has given the result 331 meter per second so there is an agreement between theoretical value and experimental value so newton laplace formula was accepted so once again student how the question is asked for 6 marks explain newton's formula for velocity of sound and explain the laplace correction of newton's formula so the both explanation carries 6 marks now let us discuss a very important question uh, that is asked in your examination explain various factors that velocity of sound is depending so when sound travels in air medium what are the factors related so sound air is a third state of matter then air is having pressure air is having size volume air is having density the de- the temperature of the air medium changes so factors that affects the velocity of sound in air the velocity of sound in air depends on the following factors first one pressure force divided by area density mass upon volume temperature amount of hotness humidity that is humidity is the amount of water contained in air so first let us take one by one the proof for this explanation is newton's laplace formula so first effect of pressure there is no effect of pressure on velocity of sound in air the effect of pressure is zero why because if pressure changes density also changes in compression pressure increases density also increase but ratio remains constant so there is no effect effect of density so velocity of sound is inversely proportional to the square root of density of air so how do you say that look at the newton's laplace formula density is at the denominator it is under square root so just directly write don't use too much of explanation or mathematical treatment velocity of sound in air is inversely proportional to the square root of density of air that is right v is inversely proportional to square root of density so it is from newton's laplace formula effect of temperature so it has been experimentally found out that if the temperature of the air medium increases the velocity of sound also increases which has been experimentally proved so you write the directly v is directly proportional to the square root of t so humidity effect of humidity humidity is the amount of water contained in air in humid air the density of air is less the, therefore velocity of sound is more in humid air as than the dry air so compare that density of humid or vapor air is 0.8 density of dry air is 1.29 so if density decreases speed of sound increase so density of humid air is less density of dry air is more so the speed of sound is more in humid air or vapor air than the dry air just you write sound travels faster in humid air than the dry air so at ntp so this completes this question so in your wave motion and sound you are going to study about the stationary waves so sound is having important properties sound undergoes reflection sound undergoes interference what do you mean by interference when two sound waves mix with each other the resultant wave is having a change in the intensity so we call it as interference the dictionary meaning of interference is superposition of so due to the interference there are three types of phenomena taking place you are going to study what is meant by stationary waves 
so superposition means mixing of two identical waves traveling with the same speed but in opposite direction form a stationary wave or standing wave so waves are classified into two types stationary wave and progressive wave so what is the characteristic of stationary waves so stationary wave no transfer of energy take place so experimentally we stationary waves are produced in a sonometer in a resonance columns again stationary wave are two types transverse stationary wave and longitudinal stationary waves so if i look at this stationary wave diagram then you are going to understand let us, so there is a question define stationary wave write any four characteristic for six marks what is the first characteristic of stationary wave stationary means standing no transfer of energy stationary waves are localized there is no transfer of energy the disturbance does not travel in any direction the meaning of localized is disturbance does not travel in any direction the stationary waves may be either longitudinal or transverse stationary waves are two types in sonometer experiment transverse stationary waves are produced student all of you have done this experiment in resonance column you are having longitudinal stationary wave. in a stationary wave there are nodes and anti nodes uh, the nodes amplitude is zero and anti nodes amplitude is maximum nodes and anti nodes are equally spaced the distance between conjugative nodes or anti node is lambda by 2 so you are going to understand in next slide by seeing the diagram the region between two conjugative nodes is called ventral segment the particle in the ventral segment in are in phase however amplitude oscillation increases from zero to maximum between node and anti node particle in two neighborhood ventral segment are opposite in phase there is no net flow of energy instead of writing all this so there is no transfer of energy in the medium it is more than enough so look at this diagram the solid line is incident wave traveling in the forward direction and dotted line is the reflected wave then the resultant wave is called as stationary waves the point where they are intersecting is called as nodes amplitude is zero amplitude is the maximum displacement of the particle from its mean position so particles are vibrating in the vertical direction up and down it is a periodic motion and etc so whatever you have studied in the previous uh, heading they are very useful so this is the diagram of stationary waves so in the science lab you come across many types of stationary wave when you are sonometer experiment so the wire is fixed at both ends forward wave and reflected wave mixed with each other transverse stationary wave in uh, in a resonance column when a tuning fork is kept on the mouth of the open pipe sound travels on the water surface touches and reflected by stationary wave is produced so please remember the definition of stationary wave and what are its characteristic this much only is asked and uh, try to understand the diagrams what are nodes just you give the definition the point in a stationary wave where amplitude is zero what are anti nodes the point in a stationary wave where amplitude is maximum so experiment to determine the velocity of sound in air at room temperature and 0 degree centigrade so if temperature changes the velocity of sound changes by resonance air column method so velocity of sound are experimentally determined in physics laboratory so the method is called as a resonance air column method resonance is a phenomena of sound when two sound waves mix with each other of equal frequency maximum sound is heard we call it as a resonance so what is the purpose of this experiment to find the velocity of sound in air at room temperature and hence to determine the velocity of sound at 0 degree centigrade we know that speed of sound is 331 meter per second if the temperature changes the speed of sound also changes you are going to calculate at room temperature and at 0 degree centigrade so what are the important apparatus needed for this experiment tuning tuning fork vernier calipers metallic pipe glass jar containing a water meter scale so this is the experimental arrangement of resonance column what is there there is a glass jar containing a water and there is a retort stand there is a pipe we a hollow pipe and it is immersed in a, a part of the pipe is immersed in the water fixed to the retort stand if tuning fork is sounded and kept on the mouth of the air column sound travels in air medium touches the water surface reflected back stationary waves are produced the length above the water surface is called as vibrating length or length of vibrations 
so below that touching there is a water so how do you explain this procedure first you have to determine the inner diameter of the resonance tube it is very necessary to calculate the end correction then immerse one end of the resonance tube in water and an excited means if a tuning fork is struck with a rubber pad of known frequency is held near the open end let the length of the air column is adjusted to get a maximum sound and it is noted as a resonance length for that frequency if you change the length of the pipe then the air column length can be changed then the frequency can be changed if the frequency of the tuning fork and air column is exactly equal to each other resonance of sound take place you are going to hear a very loud sound this procedure is repeated for different tuning fork of known frequency and readings are noted in the table so the velocity of sound in air at room temperature is determined using the formula vt is equal to 4 nl so 4 stands for constant n stands for the frequency of the taken tuning fork l is the length of resonance above the water surface it is measured and the velocity of sound at 0 degree centigrade is found out by using the formula vt into square root of 273 divided by 273 plus t degree centigrade 273 is the conversion factor from centigrade to the absolute scale small t stands for room temperature so what are the record of observation for this experiment lc of the vernier care taken then inner diameter of the tube taken mean diameter then end correction to be applied 0.3 into d you may be asking question why it is meant by end correction stationary waves are produced in the air column the final antinode is formed outside the pipe and that length is called as end correction it is given by the formula 3 times the inner diameter i hope all of you understood room temperature is given so table of content trial number the selected frequency of the tuning forks 3 1 2 3 and frequency n is selected length of resonating column is observed by experimental so by changing the length increasing length and decreasing length if frequency increases vibrating length decreases take two times take the mean then corrected length is mean l plus small small e end correction then the velocity of sound is given by the formula 4 n into capital l then mean vt is taken so you are finding three times then find the vt so result velocity of sound at room temperature is vt is equal to meter per second and zero degree is calculated by using the above formula so there is a question transverse vibration of a structured wire student there is a question state three laws of transverse vibration of a structured wire these three laws are verified by using an apparatus known as sonometer so what is meant by vibrations if a body is vibrated sound is produced what is meant by structured if both end of the wire is fixed then if it is made to vibrate waves are produced and sound is produced there are two types of vibration longitudinal vibration and transverse vibration so in a stretched wire we are given an example for transverse wave the vibration in a stretched wire so transverse vibration of a stretched wire so what is the question state three laws of stretched wire look at the diagram so if there is a wire straight line wire if it is made to vibrate so incident wave and reflected wave the resultant wave is called as the resultant wave is called as a stationary wave it is called as a transverse stationary wave in first diagram there is only one segment in second diagram there are three segment so what are the parameter that is related to the structured wire length of the wire the length of the wire changes frequency changes if the force in the wire changes frequency changes instead of force i am going to call it as a tension then if the mass per unit length of the wire changes i call it as mass density changes frequency changes so there are three laws law of length law of tension law of mass density so when a stretched and fixed between if a string is stretched and fixed between two points is and is plugged at middle stretched string vibrates the direct and reflected wave superimpose over each other giving rise to transverse stationary waves when the string vibrates at a single segment or loop the string emits a note of lowest frequency is known as fundamental frequency the frequency increases as the number of loop increases higher the frequency are the integral multiple of this one the first diagram is having only one frequency i call it as fundamental frequency 
so if the same length produces the number more number of vibrations i call it as a higher frequencies the what for the first law tells that the fundamental frequency the lowest frequency of a stretch wire is inversely proportional to the length of the string so if the length of the wire increases fundamental frequency decreases then it is oppositely related in mathematics you call it as the fundamental frequency of a stretch wire is inversely proportional to its length of the string under constant tension and mass per density mass per unit length or i call it as mass density n is inversely proportional to 1 upon l or nl is constant what does the second law or law of tension states the fundamental frequency of a stretched wire is directly proportional to the square root of tension in the string string that is if the tension in the string increases the frequency also increases n1 upon t1 is equal to n2 upon t2 then what is the third law the fundamental frequency of vibration of a stretched wire is inversely proportional to the square root of mass per unit length what do you mean by mass per unit length the total mass of the wire divided by the total length per centimeter what is the mass we call it as mass per unit length or mass density so we can write this formula n is inversely proportional to square root of m so these three laws are verified experimentally by using the apparatus known as sonometer in science lab so there is a question derive an equation for fundamental frequency first please remember i given just now what is the definition of fundamental frequency if a stretched wire produces only one segment i call it as a fundamental look at the diagram the wire is fixed at both ends the incident wave and reflected wave there is only one segment one cycle i call it as a fundamental frequency in the above diagram the vi the wire vibrates or string vibrates with a single segment the frequency of sound produces a lowest and it is called as fundamental frequency so we have established a formula v is equal to n lambda so n is equal to v by lambda look at the diagram for wavelength is the distance traveled by the for one cycle initial wave plus reflected wave one cycle then wavelength lambda so in place of wavelength i write 2l l stands for length of the wire but the velocity of sound is given by the formula tension upon mass density then if i substitute this value you are going to get n is equal to 1 upon 2l square root of t by m so what which are the formula you have to remember v is equal to n lambda v is equal to square root of t by m t stands for tension m stands for mass density and know the definition of fundamental frequency substitute it and find the result this formula is called as equation for fundamental frequency if a wire vibrates with number of segment p then in place of one i am going to write p p takes the value 1 2 3 4 hence the result so definitely among these two question you are going to get one question about the sonometer what is a sonometer all of your student you have done sonometer experiment in science lab sonometer is a rectangular hollow wooden box a thin wire is fixed at both end and it is support it is uh, having two knife edges this sonometer wire can be vibrated with the help of a tuning fork and it produces a transfer stationary waves and what is the use of sonometer sonometer is used to verify the three laws of vibration law of length law of tension and law of mass density and it is also used to find out the frequency of a given tuning fork for our syllabus what is the question describe an experiment to find unknown frequency of a given tuning fork by comparison method using sonometer so there are two methods of sonometer one is comparison method another one is absolute method if comparison method is asked write the table of comparison method so in comparison method set of tuning forks are given tension is kept constant in absolute method only one tuning fork is given and weight are varied tension is varied so you are going to verify the two laws so how, what is the method to answer for this question which is asked for 6 marks to determine the frequency of a tuning fork using sonometer by comparison method what are the apparatus sonometer rectangular, rectangular hollow wooden box with a suitable wire shoot to uh, tuning fork which is a source of sound of different frequency rubber pad to vibrate meter scale to measure the length 
पेपर राइडर एंड वेट सो फर्स्ट यू शुड नो दिस फॉर्मुला एन एक्स इज इक्वल टू मीन ऑफ एन एल डिवाइड बाय एल ओके सो एल स्टैंड फॉर वाइ लेंथ ऑफ रेजनेस कैपिटल एल स्टैंड फॉर अनोन फ्रीक्वेंसी लेंथ प्रोसीजर द वायर इज स्ट्रेच बाय अ पर्टिकुलर टेंशन फर्स्ट इनिशियली यू हैव टू प्रोवाइड ए फिक्सड टेंशन इन द वायर द ट्यूनिंग फॉर्क ऑफ नोन फ्रीक्वेंसी इज मेड टू वाइब्रेट विद हेल्प ऑफ ए रबर पैड एंड इट इज प्रेस ऑन द सोनोमीटर बॉक्स एडजस्ट द लेंथ ऑफ द वायर बिटवीन टू ब्रिजेस कैन यू सी द टू ब्रिजेस के ई नाइफ एड्स के स्टैंड फॉर नाइफ ई स्टैंड फॉर एडजस्ट सो दैट ए पेपर पीस कैप्ट ऑन द वायर बिटवीन टू ब्रिज फ्लटर्स ऑफ सो यू शुड एडजस्ट द लेंथ बिटवीन नाइफ एड्स सो दैट वाइब्रेशन इज मैक्सिमम वी कॉल इट एज अ रेजनेस ऑफ साउंड नाउ द रेजनेटिंग लेंथ इज मेजर्ड द सेम प्रोसीजर इज रिपीटेड फॉर टू और थ्री ट्यूनिंग फॉर्क ऑफ नोन फ्रीक्वेंसी द रेजनेटिंग लेंथ एल फॉर ट्यूनिंग फॉर्क ऑफ अन नोन फ्रीक्वेंसी एन एक्स इज नोटेड सो अमॉन्ग द फोर ट्यूनिंग फॉर्क थ्री इज नोन वन इज अन नोन सो अन नोन ट्यूनिंग फॉर्क रेजनेटिंग लेंथ इज डिनोटेड बाई कैपिटल एल एंड बाई यूजिंग दिस फॉर्मुला एन एक्स इज गोल टू मीन ऑफ एन इन टू एल डिवाइड बाय कैपिटल एल सो एन स्टैंड फॉर फ्रीक्वेंसी एंड एल स्टैंड फॉर लेंथ ऑफ रेजनेस एन इज गिवन वैल्यू एल इज एक्सपेरिमेंटली ऑब्जर्व वैल्यू कैपिटल एल इज रेजनेटिंग लेंथ ऑफ अन नोन फ्रीक्वेंसी विच इज टेकन फोर्थ नंबर सो टेबल ऑफ कंटेंट यू आर गोइंग टू रिपीट दिस एक्सपेरिमेंट फोर टाइम्स वन टू थ्री आर नोन फ्रीक्वेंसीज फ्रीक्वेंसी ऑफ द ट्यूनिंग फॉर्क्स आर सेलेक्टेड रेजनेटिंग लेंथ आर ऑब्जर्व एक्सपेरिमेंटली एन एल इज कैलकुलेटेड मीन एन एल इज कैलकुलेटेड फोर्थ ट्यूनिंग फॉर्क आई वी डोंट नो दिस फ्रीक्वेंसी पेस्टेड विद वाइट पेपर एंड बट यू कैन फाइंड द रेजनेटिंग लेंथ एंड आई डिनोटेड बाई एल दैन बाई अप्लाइंग द फॉर्मूला यू गेट रिजल्ट सो फॉर सिक्स मार्क्स हाउ यू आर गोइंग टू गेट द मार्क्स राइटिंग ड्रॉइंग द डायग्राम कैरीज वन मार्क्स लुक एट दिस सोनोमीटर कंसिस्टिंग ऑफ रेक्टेंगुलर हॉलो वुडन बॉक्स डब्ल्यू बी स्टैंड फॉर हॉलो वुडन बॉक्स साउंड ट्रावल्स इन दिस हॉलो वुडन बॉक्स देर आर टू होल्स ए वायर इज फिक्स एट वन एंड एंड दे आर कैप्ट ऑन द टू नाइफ एडजस्ट के ई एंड ऑन ए रोलर डब्ल्यू एच स्टैंड फॉर वेट हैंगर डायग्राम कैरीज वन मार्क्स then procedure carries two marks table of content carries two marks writing the formula carries one marks total six marks so there is one more question uh, for sonometer that is by name sonometer by absolute method what is the question asked so the purpose of using sonometer is to verify the three laws and also to find the unknown frequency by comparison method and absolute method in first question we have used a comparison method you are comparing the frequency of one tuning fork with another tuning fork so here absolute method you are going to change the tension in the wire what is the question asked describe an experiment to find unknown frequency of a given tuning fork using sonometer by absolute method purpose of the experiment or aim to determine the frequency of a given tuning fork using sonometer by absolute method again apparatus sonometer wire then sonometer box unknown tuning fork rubber pad meter scale paper rider weight then what is the procedure here the length of the wire and mass of the given sonometer wire is measured hence calculate the mass per unit length of the wire the tuning fork whose frequency n is to be determined only one tuning fork is given that is also pasted with white paper unknown is to be determined is made to vibrate by striking on a rubber pad and stem of the tuning fork is placed vertically on the sonometer surface adjust the length of the wire between two knife edges so that paper rider placed on the wire becomes flies off means vibration is maximum this is called as resonance now the resonating length l between the two bridges is measured this pro- same procedure is repeated for the same tuning fork by varying the tension that is weight hanger your this is a variable weight the unknown frequency of the tuning fork is determined by using the formula 1 divided by 2 into square root of m0 into mean of root t by l m0 is the mass density root t is the tension l is the length of resonance tension is selected length of resonance is calculated mass density is also given value observation 
mass of the wire first you have to find the mass of the sonometer wire measure the length of the wire then calculate the mass per unit length mass of the weight hanger w trial number so you have to take 3 to 4 times mass in the hanger w so tension so weight hanger is constant 1 kg so w is variable so go on changing the weight in the weight hanger then the length of resonance changes because law of tension tells that frequency is directly proportional to square root if the tension increases frequency of vibration also increase calculate the mean calculate root t by l so in this table mass in the weight hanger is selected tension is calculated resonating length is observed experimentally mean is calculated root t by l is calculated so diagram carries one marks procedure carries two marks formula carries one marks and table of content carries two marks So, in the study of sound, we are going to study about a beat. So, sound is going to exhibit an interference. One of the phenomena of interference is a stationary wave. There is one more phenomena of interference, we call it as a beat of sound. So, what is the common question asked? Define beat of a sound, write its application. So, beat is produced when two sound waves mix with each other under the condition of frequency of the first wave is nearly equal to the second. If they are both are equal, resonance is produced. If they are traveling in the opposite direction, stationary waves are produced. Beat is produced under the condition of two nearly equal frequency. So, when two sound waves of nearly equal frequencies are sounded together, if they superimpose or they mix with each other, the resulting sound is having a variation in the intensity. So, such type of phenomena of sound we call it as a beat. So, periodic variation means regular, intensity means loudness of the sound. So, how do you define a beat? Periodic variation in the intensity of sound due to the superposition. Superposition means interfering one wave with another wave of sound or mixing of two sound waves of two sound waves of not exactly equal but they are very nearly equal frequency is called a beat. Just you can also tell waxing and vanning. Waxing means maximum, handing means uh, low sound. So, what is the application of beat? So, to, uh, it is used to change the frequency of the musical instrument. We call it as a tuning of a musical instrument. Tuning means changing. The phenomena of beat is used to determine the unknown frequency of a tuning fork. Tuning fork is a source of sound. It is used to find the unknown frequency of the tuning fork. So, in mining, it is used to find the detection of the dangerous gases. Thank you student. I hope all of you understood about the wave motion and sound. So I have given all the basic idea and uh, possible questions. Don't neglect this chapter. Try to understand this chapter and study it. Very important. It carries 32 marks. Thank you very much.